Hi everyone, I am Ashutosh. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to see a new concept that is GraphQL APIs. They are available for developers from Parix release. They are uh, used to query data from third party tools to ServiceNow, to manipulate the data into ServiceNow um, using mutation techniques. Now, let's see what exactly GraphQL APIs are. How they are different from REST API and what are the differences between both. So without wasting time I'm going to start with a basic stuff that is what exactly is GraphQL API. It is nothing but a query language. It was first introduced by uh, Facebook and um, it is used to request a data using client from the server side and the data is presented to the requester party in a JSON format. Now the biggest advantage of GraphQL API is we only need one endpoint. You don't have to uh, create multiple endpoints when you use GraphQL API. That is the biggest advantage. The second advantage here is you get what you request. So you can decide what fields you want in the response. It's up, uh, the flexibility is up to the requester, not uh, up to the provider basically, okay? Now in case of REST APIs, we have to create different, different uh, endpoints. For example, if you want data from a uh, problem and incident at the same time, then you need two different, different APIs, right? But in this case, you only need one API and everything is handled by your schema or the way you query service now. Now let's go in depth uh, of this particular API and see what are the components related to this particular API. So if you're on Paris release, you can see under system web services, we have GraphQL APIs. I have created few for my testing purpose and I'm going to start with this test. The first two important things here are schema namespace and the application namespace because why these are important because we are going to use these two uh, fields when we query the data to service now so this should be unique the namespaces should be unique the application namespace can be common across multiple apis but the schema namespace is it, it should be always unique before going to the schema field, I'm going to jump to the security part, which is same as script state REST APIs, where you decide, okay, you want authentication for this particular API or not. If no, then it will be a public API. And do you want to have any extra security and or ACL, which the requester should satisfy, or it should pass that particular uh, ACL. Now let's go back to the schema part. Now, the basic thing, uh, the schema ha has two important parameters. One is query, which defines, okay, what um, the query is same. Like, for example, I want details of a particular incident. Okay, that is nothing but a query. And the other parameter is mutation. Now, what exactly mutation is? Mutation uh, is used when you want to create something in the server, update something in the server, delete something in the server side using this particular client API. The mutation variable is not mandatory. It may be present, it may not be present. But in this particular example, we are not going to see anything about mutation. Now this query, you can see the query is defined below here, meaning the format of the query is defined. So when you query from your uh, postman, or in this case, I'm going to use postman. When you query, you have to specify the query in a specific format, which is defined here. So here I'm specifying incident number, string, uh, exclamation mark, which means that the string should not be empty. It should always have some value. And then the, the incident, it's an object which is defined here. Okay, and that object comprises of the fields like ID, that is says ID, number, and other fields. So these are the fields which we have configured for this particular object, and you can request any field which is defined here. Okay, so that is 
a, a way how GraphQL API works. Now, if I go to my uh, Postman here, you can see how to query it. First of all, you will see this is the endpoint, which is which will be same for any GraphQL API in your instance. Okay. So the next thing is here you can see this is an application namespace. This is your schema namespace and this is actually the query which is defined in our instance here. You can see incident. Um, maybe I will put them side by side so that it will be easy for you to look. So you can see here incident number string incident number and this is considered to be a string. Okay. So the next thing we, which you will see here is uh, the directive source, which is very important because it decides whether to use uh, the resolver script, which is defined here, or to use the parent object to map a value to this particular state field. Okay. Then the next thing is user, which is again important. It is also mapped with a resolver script. You can see it here. Um, I will show you how it is mapped under the resolver mappings. But before that, I need to show you something else where this user is also defined here as an object. And that object has two arguments. These are the arguments. You can have more arguments. You can define arguments as per your need. Now let's go down and see what exactly uh, resolver scripts are. These are the scripts which decides uh, the format of the output, uh, which decides the object which are defined here. So for example, uh, let's have a look at this particular uh, resolver script, which gives you uh, the user object. Here you can see uh, we have two functions one is get arguments and other one is get source now get source is parent object and get arguments is uh, what we are passing actually into the query so you can see this is an id which is resolved uh, from this particular incident okay meaning that when we call the particular uh, api the id field will be resolved using this particular format and if the id is empty if we don't have any sys id for that particular incident it will take uh, the parent object and then here it is returning as the whole user object now what is graphql type resolvers this is used when we have a union between two tables or or we have a union uh, query Okay, you want the details from incident as well as parent. At that time, we use type resolvers and it has three uh, functions similar to the resolvers. It has three functions. First is get arguments, same as the scripted resolvers. The next variable which we, uh, the, sorry, the next function which we have under type resolvers is get object, which, uh, which consists of the parent object. And then the third one is get type name, which gives you the union uh, name or the interface name. In this example, I have not done anything about it, but maybe in my next videos, I will talk more about type resolvers. Now, what exactly is GraphQL resolver mapping? Here you map the path with the script. So you can have, for example, uh, opened at, if you want open that in a specific format, then you can declare that in the query. And here you decide that, okay, I have this script for uh, format date. I'm going to open this where it will decide, okay, I, I have to return the date in the specified date format, which was specified in the query. I'm going to show you that. And if you go to the resolver mapping here, you can see open that is mapped with that particular resolver script. So for this particular field, which is specified in the query, this script will be evaluated. And this particular variable will be mapped with or, or it will have the value which is fetched from this particular script. So that's a mapping. This script's output 
will be mapped with these particular variables which are defined here. Now here you can see query incident. As we are going to pass the number here, so I have said okay query incident and get me all the details of the incident or get me the incident object by number and if I open this particular uh, script here you will see that get record method is in this particular script include and I am going to get the whole glide record of that particular incident by ID now here ID is the number okay so you can pass the id or you can pass the sys id it depends upon you how you declare that particular query in my case i have declared it based upon number because here i have given the number now without wasting time uh, let's proceed for the testing so here you can see now i'm going to bring it here here you can see i have specified the query below is the id uh, below are the fields which i want for example this is also my field i want id number state impact urgency in the output opened by i want id and email id of that particular open by i can put more variables here and i need to declare those in the script as well i want to open that date in a specific format and that is ddmmyy and i want the parent incident number if it is attached to it and i want all the child incident number which are in new state attached to this particular incident let's try to query it and see what exactly we get so here you can see now namespace of the application schema namespace the query stuff incident we have defined here and these are the details of that particular incident which we got here you can see id and email of the open by person because we decided that and if i say i don't want email and if i remove it from here and if I send it again, here you will see the email is removed and only I get ID. So that is an advantage that you can decide what you want in the response. So this was a basic introduction about GraphQL APIs. There are many other concepts like enumeration, what exactly enumeration is, then uh, input where you actually decide uh, the query and you decide okay can it be equal can it be uh, not equal should it match all these things are there which i will cover maybe in my next video in detail one important concept which we have to discuss here is introspection because you can uh, do the introspection of the query in service now the introspection is by default deactivated to activate it you have to go to the properties and you have to activate the introspective queries now what exactly introspective queries are uh, introspection is nothing but an ability to query which resources are available uh, in your current api schema for example uh, i'm going to again open this so which are the queries available for me for that particular api do i need to create some extra queries or do i need to reutilize or, or the third party will first do an introspection that will the existing queries suffice my need or not if yes then i will use those if not then i can create a new api in service now so that is nothing but a uh, introspection in graphql apis to learn more about graphql apis i recommend you to go to a graphql site and learn more about the schema and more about the structure of that particular schema i have also created an article on community where i have described a few basic things about graphql apis uh, the differences between rest and uh, graphql apis now the most important question is will graphql apis replace rest um, i would say no because rest api is now there in the market from a while right it, it is used by so many tools so many uh, applications that it's really hard to replace those immediately okay so the answer is no but graphql api has their own advantages which we can start utilizing and let 
the teams decide what output they want so this was it in nutshell about graphql apis uh, if you have any queries if you need any assistance please drop your comments under my video or on the community article and i will be happy to help you thanks for watching this and see you next time